Okay, so this is going to be about Prince George and his future. If you like the video, I hope you do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very, very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So this is a viewer question about Prince George's future. Uh, Journeys into the light. Thank you so much for asking the question. I really appreciate that. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I've kind of gruesomely worked all this out, uh, Journeys into the light. Thank you for so much for looking into my future. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to say uh, if Charles were king in 2021. Um, it might be 2022, 2023, who knows, but we'll start at 2021. So he's 73 now. If he's king for 15 years, then he'll be 88 when he probably passes on because his health doesn't look that great. I don't see him living to be 93. So let's say uh, 15 years for Charles, that puts him at 88, uh, which is the year 2037, okay? In 2037, um, Charles will be 88. Let's say that's the time when it passes on to Wills. In 2037, Wills will be 54 years old, okay? If he lasts for 40 years, that would put him at the age of 94, and that puts us in the year 2077. 2077, we'll all be long gone. So uh, then in 2077, Wills is 94. If George becomes king, at that time, George, who's now eight years old, will be 63. Okay, at 63, if he lasts 30 years, that puts him at 93 years old, and the year will be 2107. 2107. So that's a look into the future for George. Let's see what the cards have to say. So Le Grand Circus and Sideshow Tarot by Joe Lee. These are really terrific cards. They come in a very nice box. If you received them as a gift or gave them as a gift, you'd feel like, oh, that's, that was a nice gift. And um, the cards themselves are really nice. Um, they're done in the style of sort of circus posters. And uh, the guidebook uh, is really a very nice little guidebook. This fellow Joe Lee uh, was a very interesting uh, person, or is a very interesting person. And uh, I want to find, there's a little bit here that talks about him. Um, but he was a circus performer. He went to the Clown College in Florida, which I'm from Florida, and I'm very well of the Clown College here. Uh, uh, that uh, you can go to to get a, a degree in that and then uh, he's done other things in his life and then once he decided uh, that he would create uh, tarot cards he uh, designed these um, to be so very useful they're easy to use um, the art on them is amazing and if you know your right away system you're not going to have a problem you know deciphering uh, what these cards are, are going to mean I mean they're pretty self-explanatory and fun 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 to look at so you know I do this so that you can have a look at these cards uh, and you know if you're not a person who collects cards or looks at a bunch of tarot cards otherwise you're only going to see the few cards that a reader pulls at a time and uh, I think it's just you're missing out on a lot so you know this uh, Le Grand uh, Circus Sideshow Tarot I love using these okay so here we go George George's future. George's future. Will George be king? Um, let's start out just with that question. Will George be king? We'll start just like that. And then we'll see if there's a follow-up question. George, will George, Prince George, who's now eight years old, and that puts us how many years into the future? That's 15, uh, 55. 55 years into the future. I mean, listen, I'm no super in intuitive. I don't know if I can do this, but uh, we just have to see. George, Prince George. Will Prince George be king? 55 years plus, plus or minus into the future. And I picked these cards because they're kind of playful. And he's a little boy, so why not? So we'll do six cards for the beginning here. One. Two, 
three, four, five, and six. Prince George, will he be king? Wow, that's a long time for the monarchy to keep going. But it's been going for a long time. So, okay, signifier card, Prince George, will he be king? Let me make sure this is filming. Yep, it's filming. Okay, will he be king? Ah, this is interesting to start out with. So this Five of Wands is kind of a pointless uh, conflict. Uh, it's not deadly fighting, but it's um, back and forth, uh, nothing productive, uh, plans that don't mesh together. Um, so that's an interesting, kind of an ominous card for whether George will be king. But that's the signifier. Okay, argy-bargy, um, pointless uh, conflict. The challenge to that, remember, we want to see if we can tell if George will be king is the Ace of Wands. Okay, so the Ace of Wands is a great big plan. And this is a very strong uh, fist here and a stake that's meant to keep that tent, hold that tent up, okay? So someone is coming forth with, with something here to make sure that this lasts. But listen, what they're staking here is a circus tent, okay? Let's remember that, a circus tent, um, which is meant to be taken down, but put back up, back up again. So and who are these people who are having this? These are just the circus uh, uh, workers. So, you know, that makes sense for the monarchy and the the, um, the courtiers. So the challenge to this uh, pointless uh, bickering or uh, conflicting plans <coughs> is whether this big offer, this ace of wands, this ace of plans, whether this can hold the tent. Okay? The base of this reading is then this Four of Pentacles. So the Four of Pentacles is holding on to your worth. So this fella, he's the ticket taker. He's the guy who's, uh, you know, selling the tickets into the show. He wants to make sure that there's something that, for you to see because he wants to collect, you know, your admission. So he's holding on to his value. So the base of this whole thing is the uh, monarchy holding on to what they've got. Pretty fair so far. In the past of this reading, where the George will be king, is this Ten of Cups. I like this Ten of Cups. So this is the past. We're kind of thinking about when the time comes that he might be king, this would be the past of that. And what it shows us here, these are the uh, MCs of the show. They're just, or no, they're not the MCs of the show. These are the fellows. That, this is their, their dog act. Okay, so look at all these little dogs, all this emotion, all this passion, all everything they've worked for to make this moment just the very best. Now, the Ten of Cups typically speaks to happy family. Okay, we're talking about royalty. We're talking about the monarchy. We're talking about the royal lineage. So they've, they've put all their dogs up for show. They've shown you all the trophies that they've accumulated, and they're showing you the best thing they have at this moment. So this is the past for in the future when, Char when George uh, uh, might be... Uh, uh, eligible. Uh, will he be king? Well, they're telling us, look, we put up our best show. We've shown you our dog act. And um, and this is successful. Ten of, of Cups is a successful card. It's a yes card. Okay. In the sky of this reading for Will George be King? Ah, Okay, so this is the Four of Swords, and the Four of Swords speaks to, this is in the typical Rider Waite deck, you'll see a soldier laying down on his sarcophagus with one sword at his side and four swords above him, kind of warning him not to get up too soon at his own peril. So in this uh, circus deck, we've got this uh, performer who's laying down on a bed of swords, okay? We've got four swords prominent here, he's got an anvil on his chest. Okay, so this Four of Swords is telling you, in the sky of this reading, is that this all depends on how carefully this fella performs forms his act. Wow, this is pretty good. Okay, now in the um, likely outcome of this first part of this Celtic cross then, is this Ace of Cups. So this is a great big offer of passion, of emotion. It's a trophy. Outside the circus, you know, they're saying, look at what we've got to offer here. We're giving you this this passionate uh, show that, um, uh, that we, we want you to have. And this is a big yes card, actually. So this Ace of Cups is the likely outcome of the first part of this Celtic cross. Let's finish it off for Will George be King. Wow. Okay, so the first card, the self, the self of that question, Will George be King, is this Five of uh, Swords. Five of Swords is an abuse of power. That's the typical uh, divination for the Five of Swords. In this Five of Swords, we have this performer who's kind of devilish, and um, he's got his swords where uh, he's dropped s several of them, one, two, three. He's got two left. So it looks like his act hasn't been particularly uh, successful. You, it looks to me like there's even some folks who are walking away from the act. 
over here, some of the, of the people who would be watching. So this five of swords, this abuse of power is pretty telling for the self of that question as to whether George uh, will make it. Okay, well, he'll be king. The um, environment that that's in, though, in the future for George is going to be this two of wands, short-term plans. Look at this fellow. So this is one of the workers who puts up the tent, who puts up the show and makes things can go on. And he's, he's making these plans. There's sturdy plans that he's got. But if you notice here, his hand is extended. He's got one hand. He's got the uh, world and uh, which you could think of the monarchy in its realm. And the other hand, he's not quite gripped this rope that's come around here. So I can't tell if he's lost grip of the rope or if he's reaching out uh, towards this pole, but this rope doesn't seem to be fastened to me. So the environment that this abuse of power is in is in this person who's building the tent, building the show, building this uh, monarchy may not have a firm grip on that realm. Okay. The hopes and the fears for all of this for in the future when George might be king is this Queen of Wands. Okay, so the Queen of Wands is, again, uh, plans. And uh, so we see her. She's here. She's serving up her wares. She's got her wands right here holding up her, her uh, circus uh, trolley, uh, this uh, van that she'd be selling her wares out of. And... Um, so she's doing her job. I mean, she's she's here. She's prepared something, and she's giving it to the people. She's selling it to the folks. So hopes and the fears is that um, is that this can be sold to the people, okay? And then the final outcome will George be king? Is going to be right here, and this is the Two of Swords, and it doesn't really give us a definitive answer, I'm sad to say, but what it does tell us, this performer, look at the act that she's performing. She's got to make a choice. I always like to say the swords are truth and justice, rules and law. Uh, we've got a spark between these two um, swords here. She's sitting in an electric chair, and it's plugged in, and she's willingly sat down to perform this uh, feat uh, for you. The, flip, the switch has been flipped. It's on. The electricity is going through here. And the two of swords is typically, you know, tells you, speaks to making a choice, deciding which way to go. But I'm going to tell you, I always say this about the two of swords and that making a choice. Whichever choice you make, whether it's truth or justice, um, it's always moving forward. OK, it, whichever way you choose on the road, the path that you take, it's the right path. It's moving you forward in your journey. Um, it may be a different path than the other one, obviously, but it's moving you forward. So I will say with all of these cards, here for whether George will be king. It looks promising, and I'll tell you why. Let's read it again. Okay, so we start out with this uh, endless, uh, pointless uh, bickering, these plans that don't quite seem to mesh, and they're challenged by this very strong stake that looks like they keep setting that tent up show after show after show after time and again. This stake is determined to make this tent happen, and that's what those roadies do. They make sure the show goes on. In the base of this reading, we've got this, this uh, ticket taker who's holding on to his value to make sure that you want to come in and pay and see the show again and again and again. In the past of this reading, in the future, looking back at the past, uh, this Ten of uh, Cups is happy family. They, they have put on their show for all these years, and they've still got something to show you here, okay, uh, in that past. Uh, in the sky here is what it all depends on. It all depends on whether this performer dutifully, carefully performs his act and doesn't get skewered by those swords. And listen, don't they usually make it? Um, and then the likely outcome for the whole thing in that first part is this great big ace of cups, which is a very powerful yes card. In the uh, the um, self of that question then, this um, uh, five of swords, abuse of power. This fellow hasn't been particularly successful. The patrons have turned away from his act, okay? And it's in the environment of these short-term plans where these roadies who keep that tent going, who put this show up, he's holding the realm in his hand, and it looks like he may have lost his grip on some of that. But then the hopes and the fears for all of that is that we will have something to sell to those patrons. They'll keep coming back to buy our plans for the future, short-term plans. And that Queen of Wands, only well, no, it's, it's pretty strong. Queen is pretty darn strong. And I wonder if this tells it that there will actually be a queen instead of a king. Something to think about. We won't be here, so how will we ever know? But then in the sky of this reading is this Two of Swords, this electrifying act. And this person has willingly sat herself down. You know what? I think it will be a queen at that time. Um, sad to say. It looks like it would be a queen. And um, it's going to be electrifying if she makes it. So, Journeys, that's my read. Well, I don't know. What do you think? That's what we got. So tell me what you think about it. I'm Mark. My journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.